All right, you know the rules. Texas Hold'em, quarantine edition. All right, small blinds, any up. One craft necklace, big blind, I'm gonna put in two. I'll call. All right. Small toilet paper. <sighs> call and raise a mega toilet paper. <laughs> mega toilet paper, small toilet paper. Listen, all in, three double rolls, two mega rolls, half a bottle of sanitizer. All right. Mama needs some more TP. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh. <laughs> nice of you to stop in. <laughs> uh, this is Ryan, and I'm Bethany from Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. As you can tell, we're getting a little sir crazy here with the uh, the COVID-19 uh, quarantine going on. Um, yeah. So uh, we've been playing a lot of games lately, um, this being one of them, you know, Texas Hold'em Quarantine Edition. <laughs> Got to be safe. Uh, but uh, we wanted to share with you guys our top five games to play while under quarantine or while under social distancing. Yeah. Um, so we took our lists at two different uh, two different angles. I, two very different directions. The way I had my list going is uh, games to play with people who aren't necessarily in the same place as you. And I took my list as a way to kind of distract yourself from the fact that you're stuck at your house. Yeah. All right. So. Oh no, the TP. <laughs> That's like thirty dollars worth of TP that just fell off the table. Oh man! <laughs> All right, so my number five uh, it was two hands is ten. One hand is five. My number five the game is Cities. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Cities is a tile laying game. Uh, we're basically it's the true definition of a multiplayer solitaire game, and I don't view that as a bad thing. I hear it thrown on there as a bad thing. I think it's fun. You're doing your very own thing. No one's interacting with you. You or your board at all. Um, so either you can need, you both need to have, um, or you know, both all players involved need to have either their own box, their own game, or in the box there's four sets of tiles. So more than one person would you know have to distribute those tiles ahead of time somehow, um, or print their own some. <laughs> Uh, but basically, you're you're building these tiles up. You have these different scoring mechanisms. And nothing interacts with each other's boards, uh, and it's a really fun game. My number five is World's Fair 1983. I just feel like that this is such an optimistic game. Just the whole World's Fair and the world coming together to create this thing and the the flavor text that it's on the cards. I just feel that this is like a really happy game. Um, and so I like the optimism that it brings. All right, so my number four game is a flip and write game called Second Chance by Uwe Rosenberg. Basically, you have uh, every player has a nine by nine grid. So one person has has the copy of the game. I didn't go all in. You didn't go all in, but it's fabulous on you. Uh, the amount of preps we've been doing is outstanding. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. Carry on. You did, uh, but Second Chance. Everybody has a nine by nine grid in front of them. You can just make a nine by nine grid on a piece of notebook paper if you want to. And then, as one person has the copy of the game, they flip up over a card that shows. Um, a different kind of polyomino shape, and you shade that in on your board. Um, and that's really all I have to do is just show the camera that one card. Everyone participating from the internet can can, can shade in their version or on their own board and uh, play the game that way. It's really interesting. Uh, my number four is Lanterns, the Harvest Festival. And I just want to reiterate that my list is different because it's the games that you have to play with people who are stuck in your house with you. Um, because it just wasn't the route that I went. But um, so Lanterns Harvest Festival, I just really like the way that this game looks, and I feel like it's peaceful to play. You're just playing these tiles, trying to connect things and gather up all these things so you can do things. That explains so many games out you there. You do things to do <laughs> things. Yeah. Excellent descriptions. <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> but I just feel like this game is very relaxing, and you're creating this really um, pretty picture with all the lanterns that you're putting out. So that's my number four. All right, my number three game is Can't Stop. This is the classic push-your-luck game from Sid Saxon. <laughs> Basically, everyone's... <laughs> 
It's Don't Stop. Don't stop believing. Oh, boy. Don't. <laughs> Never mind. All right, so you can't. If you guys hear anything, it's thundering outside. Sorry. It is. On top of everything else that's keeping us locked inside, mm-hmm. now there's tornadoes and thunder. <laughs> Yay. Everyone, so you have on your time, you have four dice you roll, you try to find pairings of numbers in order to climb up this ladder. You get to keep on going until either you don't hit one of the numbers that you're going after or you choose to stop. So it's this you know, push their luck game where you're rolling. Um, basically, all that needs to happen is one person needs to have the board itself, which is kind of shaped like a stop sign, and then every other player who's playing it just needs four D6s, which a lot of us can probably pilfer out of another game or have lying around somewhere. So, uh, can't stop for mine number three. My number three is Trekking the National Parks 2nd Edition. Is it 2nd Edition? Yeah. Okay. Trekking the National Parks 2nd Edition. Um, it's the same thing of I just like the whole layout of it, that you're traveling to the different national parks and you're thinking of the outdoors and all the things that are happening and wildlife, and I just like the picturesque idea of that. It's a really simple um, game. There's basically no barrier to entry to play this game, and I just find it not necessarily relaxing but um escapism which is kind of your theme which is kind of my theme <laughs> my number two game is code names code names is that, that game of trying to guess what the you know you give a word and a number there's a layout of words on the table and everyone is trying to guess on your team what words you are signaling to them by saying you know hat three three words somehow relate to the word hat on the board uh, there's two teams uh, in some versions of code names, so you would need you know the people who own the game to be the two of them on both teams. But then fr- from that, all the rest of the things you need is um, an overview of the cards. So you know then you can yeah. put that on the screen, and people from all over the place can respond and and guess your clues. So that's a really fun way to play code names when you don't have enough people around to play it with you at home. My number two is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. <laughs> Photosynthesis. Thank you. It's like, it's just been a time, guys. It's, it's been a time. <laughs> um, I think this game is very pretty. It is one of the most beautiful games I think we even own. And I just like that you're building these trees and you're in this forest and you get them from a seedling and you grow them up and then you block other people so they can't get the sun points. And then it's just all peaceful as it comes together. And my number two is photosynthesis. All right, my number one game is a party game called Blank Slate. Uh, basically, the premise is uh, there's a you draw cards from this box, um, and it'll say a word and a blank. So it might be something like blank house. So then everyone draws what they want to fill the blanking with. You can put full house or brick house or animal house or whatever you want to put in there. Paper and the, house. <laughs> I don't know why she... Paper house. Something like that. You could put that if you wanted to, but no one would match up with you. And that's the point, is you're trying to get people to match up with you, and you get points based off of how many people match up with you. Um, so we did this actually recently at a get-together we had digitally, <laughs> and we played with some people online. They were able to guess from home, uh, and it was really, really fun. It worked really well. And that's why it is our number one, or my number one, I guess, for my version of the list, because we've already done it, and it was so much fun um, that we're going to do it again probably soon here for... Uh, for another party. So my number one is a game that I really feel like you can escape into, but it doesn't bring you down. There's a lot of games I was thinking about that I would work for this. Like Dead of Winter is a great game to where you are immersed in it and that is all you're thinking, but it just is weighty. So I wanted a game that was kind of like that, but wasn't weighty. And I think Call to Adventure is that game. It's a game where you're immersed in it, you're building the story, you're trying to do different things in lineup, but you don't feel weighted down by the game. You feel um, uplifted isn't the right word, but you do feel like you're escaping from your reality when you're playing this game, but in a really fun way as you're building the story. So my number one is Call to Adventure. All right, so I do want to give a shout out to like a lot of two-player abstract games you can play, like checkers or chess specifically. Um, I did a lot of playing like play by email or play by mail chess back in like high school and college, and that what? was a lot of fun. Play by mail. Yeah, so like you mail off your move to someone on a piece of paper, and they mail back their your move, their their move, and then you kind of you know have a lot of time to think about your turns. So like in going postal, Ter- Terry Pratchett. Sure, I don't know. 
<laughs> but anyways, so that's you know kind of the uh, the foundation for my for why my list is the way it was. Um, but another thing that's really nice about the uh, 21st century is there's also tons of apps out there and websites where you can play board games across the world. Yeah. Um, so if you're ever on Board Game Arena or Yukata or uh, Wataju, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, if you want to play some games with me or with us, uh, send us a message and I'll give you my username and we can play some games together. All right. Thank you guys for watching our um, top Five games to play while social distancing. We, we far enough? Yeah, I think we should be good. I feel like if I've got it, you've got it by now. Yeah, that's probably true. But you don't got it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe by following us on YouTube and Facebook under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And then you can follow us on all the places. Instagram, Ryan and Bethany. Twitter, Ryan and Bethany 1. And our blog on Board Game Geek under Pounds and Inches. All right. Stay safe. Have fun. We'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye.